Well, howdy there, friends. Hello to you. Good afternoon to you on this fine Thursday. I'm David Elam, and I'm here on a mission to teach you about great guitar tone. So how many of you want to learn about great guitar tone? I, um, I remember whenever I first started playing <clears throat> that great guitar tone uh, was just really quite a mystery. I mean, not just a little bit of a mystery. It was very mysterious and very elusive uh, in the beginning. And um, that's something I want to alleviate for you guys. I think guitar tone is fascinating. I gotta be honest, like, I love everything about the guitar. There's, there's so many different um, elements to music, what makes great music. And I'm passionate, I feel like I'm passionate about every part of the process. And, and you probably are too. Like, um, I love just playing the guitar. Uh, I also love theory. I'm crazy about theory. Some people hate theory. I love theory. I think it's fascinating. Um, I love uh, tone, great tone, recording, um, producing, arranging. Like, I just think it's all amazing. Like, uh, pretty much ever since I was 13 years old, 13 years old or 12 years old, almost my whole life has been consumed by the guitar. Just everything I've done. I've built guitars, taught guitar led worship on guitar, recorded guitar, uh, played live a lot, traveled and played the guitar, um, did music missions. <laughs> I mean, it's just like everything I've ever done, uh, repaired guitars, uh, it's a big guitar. So it's about all I know how to do, but that's all right, because it's really fun, I enjoy it. So today I want to talk to you about tone. And uh, just kind of, I want to go do a quick overview um, kind of a bird's eye view of great guitar tone. And I'm actually really just mainly talking about electric guitar. Um, acoustic guitar tone pretty much comes down to you as a player and the guitar you're playing. There's really only two elements there besides maybe the strings and just changing the strings. Um, so there's not a lot that's real mysterious there. Um, I am going to mention some things today that will... Uh, apply to acoustic guitar and actually every fretted instrument that you'll ever play, ukulele, banjo, whatever it is. Some of it, um, well, most of your guitar is really, most of your tone, sorry, is, is in your fingers. Uh, most people don't realize that. But So I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, I've made a cool little guide for you really quick called the Top 10 Rules of Great Guitar Tone. So I'm so sorry, I forgot to put a link in the description. I'm going to put it right now. But if you just go to davidjelam.lpages.co forward slash rules of tone. I almost forgot. Rules of tone. That is what, that is where you can find it. Right there. Right there in the comments. Right there. See that pretty picture? There it is right there. So, um, Okay, so number one, the number one rule of great guitar tone is practice finger tone. Now, this is a term that um, is used a little bit. I mean, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a new term. I didn't make it up. Um, and uh, so practice finger tone. Finger tone refers to... I'm going to get a clean sound here. By the way, I'm loving my new amp, my new tube screen amp. I'm going to do a review on it soon, but uh, that's for a different video. So finger tone has to ref or refers to basically just how you fret a note when you play the guitar, how you fret it. A lot of people, um, especially when they're first learning, like a lot of my students run into this, and I'll correct it like in the first lesson, but um, when they play a note, they'll play it away from the, the center or away from the fret, and they'll go to the other side, and you get that buzzing sound, really nasty. So like if you're playing a chord over here, like let's say, well, like a bar chord, for example, like... That's bad because oh, if you can see, I'm not. I'm too far away from 
the fret. So when you play the guitar, you want to play as close to the fret as you possibly can. Meaning, if I'm playing like the third fret, I'm playing at the third fret, um, I want to play right behind the third fret. Okay, if I'm playing at the first fret, so you can see here's the nut, and then I can play the first fret. I want to play right behind the first fret. If I go too far over, I get that sound, which is awesome. So, um, so yeah, don't don't do that. Don't go too far over. That's part. That's like the beginning of finger tone. Okay. So when you play on the guitar. There's a lot that happens in your hands, and basically, the the thing that I could most recommend to you as a guitar player is to begin to practice finger tone. Um, is just begin to like really experiment with the way you press the frets, the way you pick the string with your pick. Okay, so watch how you pick, um, watch how you press the frets, try to feel, you got to start to feel the note, feel the frets, um, feel your guitar, dig into the fretboard a little bit. There's a big difference when I just go, okay, I'm hitting it kind of softly. I'm just going to show you really quick different ways to hit the guitar and strike the string to create different sounds. So I'm just going to hit it softly. Sounds good, right? We know how to sound bad. Yeah, that's awesome. So, <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm seeing the comments. Um, if you guys want, leave a comment really quick and let me know like where you're watching from. Like Charlie, I don't know where you're where you're from. If you want, leave me a comment. Um, I see Tio David. Hey, Tio, Tio David. Good to see you. Um, Angel, I know where Angel lives. But uh, anybody else that's watching, just feel free to leave a little comment. I want to see where you, where all you guys are from. I know some of you are in South America and Central America. Um, so I want to see where you're from. Anyway, then un comento. Uh, De dónde, de dónde estás uh, uh, mirando este video, okay? Um, so, all right. So try hitting the um, hola Paula. Try hitting the string different ways. So softly first, okay, and then try digging into it a little bit. Hear that kind of bassy sound that comes through. So softly, softly. Let me know if I'm too loud too. If if my audio is distorting for you guys a little bit, just let me know. So softly, a little bit harder. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it gets kind of nasty sometimes. Then if I hold my pick really firmly, which you don't want to do, um, like really hard and then kind of, oh gosh, that sounds terrible. I'm going to turn down just so I don't kill you guys. That's kind of what you don't want to do. You get a real brittle sound. It's nasty. It's not very good. Not very pretty. So you can hit the string hard. Whoop, a little bit loud. Hit string hard. But you don't have to hit it so hard or, or hit it brittly so that it sounds nasty. There's a way to attack the string and there's a way to not attack the string. happens in your fingers that has to do with good tone so the, the best thing I could say is just um, practice hitting the, the string different ways 
and really get into it. I see a lot of guitar players that are kind of starting out where they're real timid with the way they hit the guitar or their right hand is really uh, rigid and stiff. So just loosen up and get into the strings and... get into the strings and just start to get to know your guitar feel your guitar that's where finger tones really going to come into play when i refer to finger tone i didn't explain it very well a little bit ago but you've heard those guitar solos that just like melt your face off and they hit the guitar and the guitar just like takes off and sings like you know that that guitar string is like like practically like going into orbit i mean it's just like amazing okay like the guitar sings and you can even this can happen without a guitar amp i mean <laughs> i hope you can hear that okay so sorry um you can hear that kind of sing And strats really, strats like sing almost better than any of the guitars out there. Um, so strats have a cool sound in the bridge, but. Hear that? And of course vibrato plays into your finger tone a lot too. Adding a little bit of vibrato in there. Finger tone in a nutshell. Okay, so um, anyway, practice finger tone. Just try hitting the guitar different ways. Okay, trata de, de pegar la cuerda de maner maneras diferentes. Okay, um, para hacer finger tone. Okay, el tono del, de, del dedo. Okay, so that's the first thing. The number one rule of great guitar tone. If you don't hit the string right, and if you don't hit the fret right, and it's just not going to sound good. So it starts with you. Good tone starts with you, okay? It doesn't start with your gear at all, okay? It totally starts with you as a player. Number two is use great pick technique. Now, I already, already kind of talked about that, but just make sure that you're not hitting, um, holding the pick too firmly. So, like, <laughs> sorry, uh, my, my camera's backwards and anyway so you don't want to like be like like pressing on your pick okay because it's going to sound really brittle and just nasty when you hit the string so give it a little bit of give just a little bit okay um or if you do hold it firmly just hold it firmly but not like stiff not like you're not you should be relaxed you always got to be relaxed okay and then your wrist it's really important for your wrist to be relaxed So start with great pick technique. Um, if you're strumming, let it let it play even a little bit more. All right. So you got to let it play a little bit. Okay. So that's rule number two. Use great pick technique. Also use a great pick. There's a lot of different um, uh, thicknesses of picks and different materials. One of my favorite for electric guitar is um, the Jazz 3 size, because I love it for lead guitar. It helps you be much faster. Um, and also uh, the Ultex um, material is one of my favorites for tone. It, it just is really, really um, bell-like almost when you hit the string. So anyway, you can experiment with a lot of different tones. This one's just plastic. I don't like this one quite as much. Um, but it's still, still a great pick. I like a, a thicker pick for electric guitar, a little bit thinner for acoustic, 
um, but um, you don't use a thin pick, okay? If you're an electric guitar player and you're using a thin pick, you need to stop right now. <laughs> so uh, the reason is because um, <laughs> the reason is because uh, it it doesn't really set the string into motion the right way. So when you use a thin pick. It's like you have to hit the strings hard, and you still don't get a lot out of the string. So a lot of your tone is is not only the way you hit the string, but what's hitting the string. And then those two things combined cause the string to vibrate in the optimal way. And when the string vibrates like it's supposed to, it makes a really great sound. But if it if it's dampened or if it's not really sent into vibration the right way then it just doesn't sound good. That's kind of the scientific side of it. But anyway, okay. So number one, practice finger tone. Number two, use great pick technique and a great pick. These are the top 10 rules of great guitar tone. Number three, play close to the frets. We already talked about that. I talked about that first. Number four, if you want to have great tone, change your strings often. Um, and a lot of people ask me, people ask me all the time, how often should I change strings? Like when I worked at Guitar Center, they were always asking me, how often should I change strings, you know? And um, it really depends, to be honest. It depends on how often you play and how oily your hands are. Unfortunately, some people's hands are a lot oilier, oilier than others, okay? So um, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I can think of some stories, but um, some people's hands are, hands are really oily, okay? So uh, some people have to change the strings, honestly, like every time they play. That's, I know it sounds really extreme, but especially for like touring musicians that sweat and stuff on their strings, and it's kind of gross sometimes, believe it or not. So, um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, but I recommend, what I recommend is anywhere normally, uh, for most people, it would be like between a month to three months, okay, that you want to change your strings. Even with them just sitting there, uh, because they're made of metal, they're going to corrode because of humidity and, and everything, you know, elements in the atmosphere. So, um, so yeah, so about one to three months, okay, change, change your strings. Once they start to sound kind of dead and there's just not a lot of brightness there, that's when you want to change them. Um, also, if they're going out of tune excessively, there's a good chance that you might need to change your strings, especially if they've been on there for a while. Um, also, never, like if you break a string, just change all of them. Unless you like just put a brand new set of strings on, change all your strings. If they're more than a week old, just change them. Because uh, that new string will sound really bright and the other ones will sound dull and it'll sound out of balance and kind of weird. So, and it'll sometimes feel weird too. Um, okay, so number four, top 10 rules of great guitar tone, change your strings often. Number five, maintain your instrument. So, I know a lot of people don't know how to maintain their instrument and I'm actually planning in the near future to um, record a series of videos uh, teaching you how to set up your guitar. Um, uh, I actually went to school to learn how to build guitars and repair guitars, and I ran my own repair shop for five years. So, uh, with a lot of happy customers. So, um, setting up guitars is something I love doing. It's really fun uh, because it, you can really make the guitar play and sound its best if you know what you're doing. So, I, I want to help you guys out with that. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Uh, so, if you want to learn how to set up your guitar, just be watching for, um, I'll, be, I'll be announcing some new videos uh, in the near future. But um, maintaining your instrument, like whenever you change the strings, uh, oiling the fretboard is good. If you have a rosewood fretboard, if you have a maple fretboard, don't do it. <laughs> don't do that because your maple fretboard has a finish on it. But if you have a rosewood fretboard like I do here, you want to um, oil, it, oil it with lemon oil about... Uh, every six months or so, or each time you change strings, um, just depending on how, how dry or wet it is, um, or humid it is. So that's one thing. Um, polishing the frets uh, is something that can help your, your tone, just keeping those clean. Um, 
and then getting a setup. So making sure that your neck isn't uh, like bowed this way or this way, that your action is at its optimal height can help you uh, get good tone. You know, if you're getting a lot of buzzing, um, then that means your strings are too low or maybe there's back bow in your neck. And um, so anyway, you know, that can steal your tone. So keeping your guitar maintained, keeping the pickups at the proper height, uh, you know, installing a, a bone nut. This is a bone nut here. Installing a bone nut can, like, is one of the best things you can do for your, your guitar tone. Um, so just maintaining your instrument, also doing some, like, minor upgrades can really make a big difference in your tone. Okay. Number six, okay, this is number six on the checklist, the top ten rules of great guitar tone. And this one is, might sound funny, might sound like I'm stupid. <laughs> you're going to be like, you're, you're dumb, like, like what does this have to do with great guitar tone? I'm going to tell you what it has to do with great guitar tone. So I've been teaching um, guitar for accumulatively almost 15 years. So... Not quite half my life, but it's been a while. And I've noticed something. Um, there's a and there's a really big difference uh, between the students that do this and the students that don't. Um, whenever we're practicing together in class, but um, I found that one of the absolute biggest keys after teaching hundreds and hundreds of students and watching them practice like right in front of my eyes. I've gotten to see so many people practice and I've noticed this really awesome phenomenon um, that I'm excited about. And that is that when you practice guitar, you ready for this? <laughs> Everybody's like, come on, say it already. Okay, when you practice guitar with a metronome, yes, a metronome, your guitar tone will fly through the roof. I guarantee it, okay? Um, your guitar tone will fly through the roof, okay? I'm serious. So I'll have students play, like, a, a here's a common exercise that I do in my lessons. It's called a, just, it's just a chromatic exercise, one of the ones that I do. <laughs> Okay, so that's the exercise. But whenever my students are first learning to play it, you know, they'll be kind of like, you know, and they'll have some buzzes and their fingers, fingers can get kind of sloppy and, you know, because they're just learning it. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't have a metronome set up to show you, but then I'll turn on the metronome, like at a slow speed, 50 beats per minute or 60 beats per minute or something. As soon as I turn on the metronome, this amazing thing happens. So I'll, I'll turn it on, it's like, and they're like, they sit up straight, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they sound amazing. It's incredible, it's so cool. It's like the coolest trick ever. Like you can like trick yourself and trick your guitar students into playing guitar 10 times better just by the click of a button. It's amazing. Like I'm gonna make, this is gonna be, this is gonna be one of my headlines for one of my blog posts. How to make your guitar, ten, your guitar playing 10 times better with the click of a button. No joke, I'm not kidding at all, okay? I'm not even exaggerating. So I've seen it like, so many times, immediately their their guitar tone will change, and they'll like be this like five times better guitar player. Like literally, when I just turn on the metronome, they sit up straight, and their fingers are like close to the frets, and they're like, "Yeah, you know, I'm gonna do this. I'm playing with the metronome, and I gotta keep up." And so I've said for years that your your metronome is like your own personal drill sergeant for the guitar, but he, but he's not mean. He doesn't like say bad things to you and like put you down and call you names and stuff. He's actually, you know, he's just there to help you. But like, he will demand the best from you. 
And so if you want your guitar playing to be its best and you want your tone to sound amazing, start practicing with the metronome. You will thank me for it so much. You'll be like, wow, I had no idea. And really, I mean, literally, like five minutes a day. Practice scales and exercises five minutes a day and with it with your metronome, you'll notice a huge difference in your tone. It's amazing. Okay? So top ten rules of great guitar tone. Practice finger tone, use a great pick and pick te pick technique. Sorry, use a great pick te pick technique and a great pick, okay? Play close to the frets. So don't don't get over into the buzz zone. Change your strings often. Maintain your instrument and practice with a metronome. I should have put that as number one. Actually, I didn't want to put it as number one because I was afraid that if I did, people would be like, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Like, what in the world does a metronome have to do with tone? Like, seriously? No, it has, it has like, more to do with tone than your amplifier and your guitar, pretty much. Okay, so number seven is less gear is more tone. Less is more. Um, now this isn't like a hard, fast rule necessarily, okay? But in general, um, when you're playing electric guitar especially, you wanna have, like you only want to use the effects that you actually need for the song that you're using or whatever. Um, in fact, good example like Stu G from Delirious. I remember he, whenever he's in the studio, he actually breaks up his pedal board. So when they're when they're when they're recording records and you know they're like world class musicians and he has such great tone on albums. Like it sounds so awesome. Anyway, um, he'll actually like go guitar to amp and he won't put anything between the guitar and the amp and unless he absolutely has to and it's like a it's like a an effect for that song but he'll only add like so if he's going to add like a delay then he'll add the delay to his pedal to, to the signal chain but he won't add anything else so like there's proof i mean he's you know a world-class musician and he knows like you've only got to you only want to use um the pedals and effects that you need for that song. So in general, like right now, um, I just built a new analog board, which I'm going to be reviewing soon, um, talking about gear and stuff. Hey, Tanner, what's up, man? I was just thinking about you. Um, so I just built a new analog board because I've been using my Pod X3 Live forever, and it died on me, uh, which I was kind of sad about, but then I was kind of happy about too because it forced me to buy some new gear, which I've been wanting to do forever. And... Um, Right now, so I have a tube amp that has a clean channel and an overdrive. I have one other distortion pedal. I have a delay pedal, a wah pedal, and a tuner. And that's, that's all I need. Um, and I love it. It's awesome. I always loved having a simple setup. Um, some people like tremolo. That's cool. Chorus. You know, whatever. Um, but, like, don't just add a bunch of pedals to your to your pedal board that you don't need and like use like once every six months or something because um, it'll take away tone. Also, try not to use more tones than you need to or more sounds you need to or pedals on like one given song. So you're just gonna, you want your guitar to shine through. If you want great tone, you gotta let your guitar shine through and, and not muddy up your tone with like a bunch of sounds to where it doesn't even sound like a guitar anymore. Now, I get that that's cool like for effects and stuff, and I do that too, and it's really fun, okay? But like when we're talking about playing the guitar like a guitar and good guitar tone, less is more, okay? So anyway, I think you guys get the idea, okay? So that's number seven, less is more, okay? Um, number eight, get to know your gear. Now, this is so huge, so, so huge. Um, and I'm actually gonna be doing a whole series of videos coming up soon where I talk about like um, just getting the most out of your gear. I, that's so fun. And um, I had a, the same, I had the same analog rig. I had the same amp, pedals, and like everything, almost all the same for like, I don't know, 10 years or something. Um, I didn't really change anything because I didn't have to. And, and all that time that I spent with that gear 
helped me get to know that gear and I could get so many sounds out of it. I had two overdrives, a delay pedal, a wah, a compressor back then, and a tuner. And that's all I had. And I think at one point I had a volume and then I got rid of it. Um, and I got so many sounds out of that. And I would always get compliments on my tone and stuff. And I, I did a lot of recording and I never added anything to that gear. Like it was awesome. And I used different guitars, but um, you know, get to know your guitar. Like, dude, I can get so many sounds out of this guitar. In fact, my Pi Street Live does everything in the world, right? Like the, these digital pedals nowadays, they, they do so many things for us. But I can actually get to, I can get more sounds on the fly out of my analog rig than I can out of a digital rig because it's, it's more responsive to me and it's simpler and I can modify things on the fly and I can, it forces me to, to use my guitar more and understand how to use the tone knobs, which pickups to use, how to use different hand techniques, how to use like my wand, do all kinds of weird things or my delays. Um, dude, I can get like a whole lot of tones with like next to nothing gear, okay? Um, even if it was just like a guitar and an amp, like I can, there's a lot of things you can do. So um, get to know your gear experiment with it what is what is what does your guitar sound like in the middle position with with the the tone knob roll just slightly back you know do you like that what if you roll the volume back like to eight or something or to seven and clean up your tone a little bit you know your overdrive what does that do for you you know so like so here i am all the way up Okay, what if I just roll the um roll the volume back a little bit? Where are you go here? If I roll back volume and get it almost clean tone and turn it up. And every guitar responds a little bit differently. So you want to get you want to get to know that you know, about your guitar, how it responds to volume changes, how it responds to tone changes, like mess around with it a little bit. Um, anyway. So yeah, get to know your gear, get to know your amp, like play around with your EQ. If you've got a presence knob, like play with your presence and trouble and like do this and you know, just mess around with it a lot and get to know your gear. What does it sound like at this setting? What does it sound like at this setting? You know, like this just, it's amazing. Every amp, every guitar is, is different and organic in a way. So the more you mess with it, uh, the more you'll get to know it and and uh, find out what it's really capable of. So just get to know your gear. I'm gonna do like a whole series of um, videos on that coming up soon, like in the next couple weeks. Uh, they'll be on YouTube, so that's gonna be awesome. Okay, um, so number nine. So you notice I, I left the ones that everybody thinks about the most, I left them for last because they really are last. They really are last. First you need to get great tone in your fingers. Then you need, just need to make sure you're using good pick technique, which is really kind of goes with them together with number one. Play close to the fret. So those those first three really all have to do with finger tone and the way that you play the guitar. Okay, so there it's it's mostly dependent on you. Then change your strings often. Maintain your instrument. Practice with a metronome. That should be number one. Less is more. Get to know your gear, and then. Choose a quality guitar. But it doesn't have to be the best guitar in the world. You can go to a Guitar Center and spend $250 and get a good sound if you know what you're doing. So um, now I realize there's definitely a difference between a $250 guitar and a $2,000 guitar. There's a huge difference, okay? A huge difference. But that being said, um, I remember one time, uh, Billy Corgan, I saw an interview with him one time, and I don't really listen to Smashing Pumpkins, but um, 
but it was he he said something really interesting. He said that one of his uh, favorite guitars that he used for like a whole tour was a Squire guitar, which is like a second rate Fender. If you don't know what that is, a Squire guitar um, that he found in like a pawn shop or something, and that was his favorite guitar for like a whole tour, and he used it like all, like every night. I mean. Like that's weird uh, in a way, you know. It's kind of weird, um, but and funny, but uh, but it's so true that sometimes, uh, like this guitar, for example, I bought for one hundred twenty-five dollars at a pawn shop. Yeah, one hundred twenty-five dollars at a pawn shop. It's a Mexican Fender. Um, somebody rubbed the uh, finish off of it. They uh, the the nut was broken um, when I got it, and uh, you know I just fixed it up. And uh, change some of the pickups out, but even without changing up, changing out the pickups, you know, it's not, it was a good guitar. Um, so sometimes you can get cool deals, but choose a quality guitar anyway. Okay, and if you have questions about that, let me know. Send me a comment or or, or send me an email or a message or whatever, and I'll answer any questions you have. And then play through a winning amp. So choose a winning amp. Um, Fender is a great way to go. Uh, Marshall, Vox. There's a lot of digital amps nowadays that do sound really good. Boss came out with the Boss Katana recently, which sounds really good. Um, so you don't have to spend a ton of money on gear, okay? In fact, don't spend a lot of money on gear. Get to know your guitar. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's the, gear is such a thing, and people spend like literally thousands of dollars on guitar pedal boards, um, but never really learn the instrument and and learn music and how to how to their scales and how to really solo and and you know how to get great tone in their hands and like what I'm trying to say is don't rely on your gear per se rely like it starts with you so take respons you take responsibility for your tone and how you sound and use what you've got and make it sound great make it sound its best play around with it tweak the knobs you know just get to know it, and um, and you'll have a lot of fun doing it. Now I know that, I mean, good gear makes a difference. Okay, but like I just recently um, did a whole new setup. Uh, I bought this amp and, and the cab, matching cab to one twelve with a selection speaker. It sounds amazing. I love this amp. I'm crazy about it. It's awesome. It's the Ibanez TSA fifteen head. It's a fifteen watt tube head has a tube screamer built into it. It's so cool. It has a boost that sounds amazing. I love it. It's like the best little amp I had never heard of. And then I have a distortion pedal. Like I said, you know, I already told you. I spent like cables and all between six and seven hundred dollars on a completely new rig. Like six or seven hundred dollars. Like some people are spending almost that much on guitar pedals nowadays. I don't know. Like, you just don't have to do that. So anyway, uh, buy used stuff. Like, what's the big deal? Like, I just bought a used uh, Boss DD20 um, and got, you know, like for a great price. And, and it sounds awesome. Uh, it's what I used a long time ago, and so I just decided to go with that again. It's a great pedal. So, um, yeah, you just don't have to spend a lot of money. Anyways, okay, so... I want to hear from you guys. Um, leave me a comment and let me know what most frustrates you about your guitar tone. Like, is it your pickups? Does it sound thin to you? Um, do you not like, is there anything that's confusing? I'll do my best to answer your questions. Um, also, don't forget to download the freebie. You can download this to your phone just to inspire you and, uh, and uh, sign up for my email list. I'm going to be doing a lot more blogs here in the near future. Um, like I've already got some uh, written up and uh, I think I posted a new one on my website the other day, davidjelam.com. Yes, I did post one. And so um, I'll be doing a lot more blogs, a lot more videos on YouTube, a lot of really cool stuff coming for you guys. Um, I really want to help you with your guitar playing. I really want to help you uh, be amazing as a guitar player and as a worshiper of Jesus. So that is my goal. That's my passion. That's really one of the main things I live for. So if I can help you guys out, that's what I want to do. So um, go to uh, go to the link in the comments uh, 
and I'll put it in the, uh, the post here in a minute, but um, it's davidjelam.lpages.co forward slash rules of tone. Rules of tone, okay? To download the top 10 rules of great guitar tone, okay? It's going to be super fun. Um, so you can uh, get this checklist, everything that I just went over, to help you remember what you need to focus on. Print these things out. I mean, these freebies, I make them for you guys. Um, so you can print them out or put them on your phone. But, like, print these things out and, and put them next to where you practice and help you remember, like, what's important about the guitar, what's important about music whenever you're practicing. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed today. I certainly did. Uh, I love talking about the guitar. Please let me know um, how I can help you. Leave me a comment in, in the comment section and uh, um, let me know what's the most frustrating thing to you about your tone. Um, and any comments or insights that you guys might have, okay? But uh, please leave me a comment. I, I love to hear from you guys. And, uh, and uh, we'll see you next week. See you next week at 5 o'clock here on Facebook Live, okay? So you guys have a great week. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good one. Bye.